All right, boys, it's uh, Semphis here. We're gonna talk about um, the effects of caffeine, um, L-theanine, and sleep. Um, so first off, I'm gonna start talking to you guys about what I think a lot of people make a mistake of doing. Um, if you take coffee and you feel anxious or jittery, or you feel like you get headaches or anything like that, start trying to take L-theanine. It's like $9 for like 120 capsules on Amazon. It's very cheap, it's very, very cheap. It's the active ingredient found in green tea. Um, it's that healthy thing that, they, that basically you're drinking it and they're like, oh, the green tea is so good for you. That's what it is, it's L-theanine. So they isolate it, they take it out. So basically what you do is you wanna take about double the amount or 1.5 times the amount of it. So if you have one cup of coffee, about 150 milligrams of caffeine, you probably wanna take around 200 to 250 uh, L-theanine, somewhere around there. Um, diff you, you can tweak it, you can, you can test different amounts. It's not a big deal, it's like one more capsule to see if it helps. Um, but it should get rid of the jitters and it will get rid of the vasodilator effects. So your, your, actually, your blood vessels actually kind of condense a little bit. Um, it'll open them back up, uh, allowing the blood flow to be better. So I would really suggest people using this if they have problems uh, with caffeine. Even if you don't, I would still try it and see if it helps. Uh, a lot of people are pounding energy drinks. Uh, they're full of like B12, taurine and stuff, but they rarely have L-theanine in it, especially in the doses required. Sometimes I've seen it at like 25 milligrams. What is that gonna do? Um, literally nothing. So um, I, would, I would suggest doing this. You can, it's still just a little bottle. You can bring it with you, whatever, um, and just take it with your energy drinks or your coffee. Um, now, the difference between coffee, energy drinks, um, I would go with coffee and L-theanine personally. Uh, coffee from the bean is going to have way better health effect, uh, benefits and it's going to, it, yeah. it's debatable on the health benefits. You know, there's a, one study saying it's bad for you, one saying it's good, one saying it's good for your heart, one saying it's bad. Um, I will say there are four different metabolizers of coffee. There's like, uh, there's like, uh, I'll, I'll post the video in there uh, from from a different guy I respect because he, he goes over it in great detail. But basically, there's one group of people that shouldn't dr drink caffeine because it's actually harmful for you. And then the other groups, you're like, you can be a fast metabolizer, metabolizer of ca caffeine or a slow metabolizer. If you're a fast metabolizer, you're likely one of those people that can kind of drink a cup of coffee and then three hours later just go to bed <laughs> and you're fine. If you're a slow metabolizer, you might still be fine, but it's gonna be in your system longer, uh, obviously because you metabolize it slower, but you're not gonna have all the negative effects. And there's another group where you literally, it's hurting your body. So I'll post that video in the channel to take it out because it's just too much for me to go over. Um, now, energy drinks, are they bad for you? Um, not all of them, some of them are. Yeah, they're high in sugar a lot of the time, but what I would say is opt for the sugar-free ones. Um, not, not because I necessarily care about the sugar, but um, when you're playing a tournament or a big match, you don't really want to spike uh, your insulin and your blood glucose and then have it kind of going all over the place. I suppose if you sipped on your on your energy drink full of sugar the whole time, small sips throughout the whole match, you'd probably be fine because it would kind of stabilize it. Um, but you could just avoid that. Most people don't sip it. Most people drink like half at one time and like take sips after that until it's gone. Um, so I would just go with the sugar-free or the coffee personally to just kind of avoid that entirely. Um, if you should combine that with L-theanine, that's kind of like up to you. If, like I said, if you get the jitters and stuff, I would. Um, yeah, when should you drink caffeine or energy drinks? Uh, I personally like to drink it about 45 minutes ahead of time to an hour. It takes about 15 minutes to get into your bloodstream. So if you drink it like as the match is starting or a little bit like in pregame or something, the effects aren't gonna hit you until a couple rounds in or if you're lucky and it gets delayed a little bit, it'll hit you on like piss around. You're gonna feel that big spike and then you're gonna go down a little bit. So I personally rather it be just that more stable feeling like, oh yeah, I have caffeine in my body, but I'm not like, I'm not peaking. Um, that's just me. Some people like that feeling, so you're gonna go by yourself, but minimum 15 minutes, 15 minutes before your match, um, up to 45 minutes to an hour, just depending on the person. Uh, how much should you take? How, how much caffeine? Well, that kind of depends on the person, right? Some people prefer a ton of caffeine, um, 
some people prefer very little. Um, so for someone like me, I've kind of reduced my caffeine lately. So I probably only drink like 200 milligrams, maybe 300 on, for a really important game or something. I drink that about 45 minutes earlier and take probably two to 400 milligrams of L-theanine with it. And that will, that'll make me feel good. Um, yeah. So like I said, person dependent, so I can't really give you like an exact dosage, but just kind of play around with it, uh, what feels good, but do not just take excessive amounts of it for no reason. Um, if you exceed a thousand grams of caffeine in a day, especially at one time, you can have heart arrhythmias and need to go to the hospital. Um, it might not happen, but you're going to feel like shit. Like I promise you're going to feel pretty bad. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> so, uh, keep it, I would say under five, 600 milligrams a day would be my advice personally. So, um, yeah, you're just going to kind of have to pick that yourself and then also determine how many matches you're playing in a day. Are you at a land tournament? Or are you just playing one game online? If you're playing a best of one online, whatever, you could take more, but an hour before, uh, you could take a bunch if you th if you think that helps and then drink it and whatever. If you're playing a LAN tournament and you're playing all day, well, you probably wanna have a cup of coffee in the morning, ride it out until midday, maybe have an energy drink if you think you need it or another coffee, ride that out until the evening and then depending on how many matches you have, have more coffee or something. Uh, you also have to think about your sleep. Now, obviously winning in the moment is the most important thing, but at the same time, if you feel like you're, you're a big uh, you're not an underdog team um, and you're you're the favorites you might want to skip it so you can sleep and then play the better matches tomorrow these things all kind of independent of the person there's not kind of an exact way to do it um, yeah I've, I've, I've done what I thought were mistakes where I didn't drink coffee when I feel like I should have um, and I've lost and then obviously you're out of the tournament so it's like well I guess I can go sleep now <laughs> so uh, yeah I, I would just it, person dependent. Um, so yeah, that's, that, those are kind of my thoughts on, on caffeine. Um, now reaction time of caffeine, like they, they basically have proven that you are going to have better mental focus, um, and better reaction time and cognitive abilities with that. And I have a couple studies here that I'll post in the thing that, you know, these Taekwondo athletes took a bunch of coffee and they battled it out. And basically the results are just like the people that were taking caffeine performed better, fatigued, uh, slower, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so I'll post these in the thing if you want to go and kind of like look uh, through these to kind of like show this. Uh, it's really good for strength training actually. Caffeine is really good. Coffee, coffee from the bean is, is better, especially when it comes to strength. Um, so energy drinks are handy and they taste good. Pre-workouts taste good, but at the end of the day, drinking actual coffee with some L-theanine and um, that kind of stuff is probably better for you and more effective. Um, so yeah, um, that's my opinions on coffee. Um, now, what's even more important than caffeine, in my opinion, is sleep. If you sleep five hours and you pound a bunch of coffee versus the guy that takes no coffee and he sleeps 10 hours a night, every night, I promise you the 10 hours of sleep guy will be faster reactions and uh, more conscious the whole time. I, I, I guarantee it. Um, there's a bunch of studies here that I'm gonna post. That there's a bunch of sleep studies, okay? Um, these all say um, that basically you can't make up sleep debt in a day or like one day. So if you go a week of five hours of sleep, so you're going to sleep, you're, you're playing ECH till 3 a.m., you go to sleep, you wake up at, at 7 a.m., four hours of sleep, go to school all day, you come home, you start grinding again. And then on the weekend, you crash for 10 or 12 hours and you try to make up for it, you won't. It, that's not how it works. You're going to perform a little bit better the next day. It's not good. It's obviously going to help that you slept that much, but you're not going to go back to like you were sleeping 10 hours every night. You're going to have to get your sleep pattern back on track for another week or two before everything goes back up. So as you sleep, your reaction time is going to decline and it's going to bottom out. So it's not going to go down past a certain point there. Your body will adapt and eventually when you decline in sleep, you're, you're going to you're gonna be like maybe 50% or 60% of your max reaction time and, and you're just gonna level out. It's not gonna go any further down from that, it doesn't seem like. Um, but after that point, 
um, getting it back up to 100 isn't gonna happen in one or two days. So that's why it's important to have a good um, sleep schedule. Not to mention a lot of younger guys, if you would like to grow and be taller, uh, sleep is very important to that. So um, there's just a ton of health benefits to not dying from sleep. So sleep, I know it sucks to go to sleep and and make time to sleep eight to 10 hours a day. No one wants to do that. But in terms of like, would it be more beneficial to play six hours of Counter-Strike and then sleep for eight hours or play eight hours of Counter-Strike and sleep for six? I think playing for six hours and sleeping longer would be better. You're gonna get retain more of the muscle memory. You're gonna retain more of the better, you're gonna make better decisions and um, learn more and retain more with more sleep. Now everyone is different and some people can get away with less sleep than others. Um, so obviously those people, I mean, you do you. I, I can't advise everyone to be like that though. Now, the people that like to pull all-nighters, 24-hour streams, that kind of stuff, this study right here literally shows that you will actually perform worse than a drunk person <laughs> once you start sleeping, once your sleep deprivation kicks in for too long. Now, most people aren't like doing this every day and I get it, you have friends over, you're doing a LAN party or something like that, or just you and your friends doing it every once in a while. I, have fun, man. I'm not, I'm not trying to sit here hating on people, but I'm just saying don't, don't do this every week. Don't every Friday night think you're gonna log on and pull an all-nighter and it's gonna help you. It's going to make you worse. It will make you worse in the long run. Go to sleep. <laughs> sleep is king for everything. So that's just my opinion here is just, uh, not even my opinion, this is the science here that you should sleep. Um, yeah, just I can't stress enough, you, you can't make up um, for sleep. I'll post these studies in here, they'll show you multiple different studies showing chronic sleep deprivation can't be made up in one night. There are a very small group of genetic elite people that get on about like three hours of sleep and stuff. Um, very, very rare. Usually these people are at the high end of, uh, like the very high, they're, they're up on the ladder of the kind of like the, the rich people, you know, they're, they're very good because they can just get so much done with, with such little sleep, you know, they can just get up and start working right away. So, um, yeah, anyways, yeah, sleep is very important and, um, yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts on, on like kind of these things. If you have any questions or anything like that in comments, um, feel free to leave anything. Um, one other thing I would say is also like what you eat before you play a game. Um, I'll, I'll go over, I might even just post some meals that I make before I, I play is I would say, um, depending on the person uh, and everything, regardless of like what foods you like, stay away from like the fried greasy foods. And this is me saying, I don't give a shit if you wanna be fat or you wanna be skinny or whatever don't eat a burger no matter what you care like don't don't feed yourself all this fried super high sodium uh food it's going to it's gonna it's gonna cause like a big carb coma you know your your insulin everything gonna spike up and it's gonna go down and you're gonna feel tired and lethargic so eat something kind of smaller oatmeal with protein powder you know i like cream of rice uh some berries in there uh, some, some, you know, just fiber, that kind of stuff. It's just going to get in your system in a slow, steady stream, you know, you know, steak and rice and veggies, chicken, rice and veggies, fish, all that kind of healthier foods. Um, just kind of have a smaller version of that before your match, about an hour, two hours before the bigger, if you were going to have steak and rice and veggies, I would say two hours, three hours before would probably be good too. If it's a best of three. Um, if you just want to do a quick snack or something, you know, oatmeal is great. Oatmeal, protein powder, some eggs or something like, bam, done, easy, healthy, good. Now, sodium, if you're working out and stuff is fairly important too. Um, a lot of people, they'll drink a whole water and they don't realize that if you drink a ton of water and you don't get an adequate amount of sodium, you're going to dehydrate yourself. You actually dehydrate yourself by consuming a lot of water and not a lot of salt so if you don't cons if you don't do any activity and you take in a lot of salt yeah it's probably not the best idea but if you don't do anything and you drink a shitload of water then put some salt in your water i know it sounds gross that's what i do i put a little bit of salt in all my water that's what um i salt all my food i'm not saying 
There's a difference between eating Big Macs and fries that are loaded with like 900% of your daily sitting value, value and just sprinkling some salt on your eggs when you eat them, you know? So start salting your foods if you drink a ton of water. And uh, those are just some of my tips and kind of my thoughts on, uh, on, on these things. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was a little bit informative. Peace out.